So I actually got a free car. I donated two cars on this channel in the past, and what do you know, someone gave me a free car. Can you guess which Volkswagen it is? I'll give you five seconds. Take your best guess. It's a stick shift. That's why I had to accept. All right, guessing's over. It is a 2009. I didn't realize it was this new of a year. It's a 2009 Volkswagen New Beetle, I think it's technically called. Because Beetle, you know, goes back to the 70s with the little very small CC engine. This one actually has a 2.5 liter inline five. And I'm going to be taking some stuff off like the bumper to fix it up. You see the, uh, something happened where the bumper popped out on the passenger side. And if you can see right here, the tab is broken almost all the way off. It's bent 90 degrees and I can't get it back in. It can't clear this. These headlight housing is pretty big actually for the year. And I'll have to actually clean those up. They got the, that classic plastic housing kind of fogged up with that classic problem. So I'll have to some of that headlight polisher it looks actually, actually looks not too bad on camera but in person it's definitely they're definitely yellow that I need to be taken care of and what do you know a free car I got two keys and not just one that's uh, kind of ironic because that red Civic I had on this channel that Civic SI 2011 sedan they only gave me one key and said they were gonna give me a second key but never got it so what are you gonna do so that car Thanks for that car. Is hopefully it's still running. I don't know when I whenever I sold it, so I could buy the townhouse. Hopefully, it went to a good owner. It's still taking care because those if you get if you have an eighth gen Civic, those prices are going up. So yeah, like I said, five cylinder, and when I had it running, I had to actually recharge the battery, and now uh, we'll see if it starts again. But there's a few problems. Like I said, the bumper, the headlights. When I had it running, the motor was jumping around a lot. I think this motor mount could be shot but I gotta it's very tight in there so I gotta get down in there and see what's going on with that and I actually thought the belt was on inside out but in the videos I've seen people changing the belt the groove side is facing out to you on the top pulley but if you can see I don't know if the camera will focus down in there let's try it yeah it's kind of hard to see but the next pulley down uh, I can see the grooves on the pulley right below the top pulley. And, uh, yeah, you can barely, barely see it right there. The grooves are facing out. And the belt groove side is facing into those grooves on that pulley. So I guess I guess it's right. But I, I thought for sure that this top pulley, and I can't show you on the video because I can't, can't even get my finger in there, but I thought this top pulley had grooves on it. But you know what? I could be wrong. No, it definitely does. I can't, I can't show you uh, what what my fingers touching, but I can feel grooves in this pulley. So I guess for whatever reason, this should be a smooth pulley. But I guess, I guess it kind of works. I don't know. Who knows? Car's been running with that set up ever since. But let me know if, if that's a little kind of an oddball thing on these speedles where the groove pulley but the belt's facing out to you but the rest of the other pulleys have the correct orientation of smooth side to smooth pulley groove groove side to groove pulley okay what else to tell you might need a new battery we'll, we'll figure that out and if we take a look underneath i have it jacked up on the front driver's side in the tire front tires about about half life a tread if you look at the rear tire the tread is actually much better so what i'm thinking is because it's front wheel drive you got more weight on the front these are your steering wheels to get more traction just for safety i'll put the better tread tires rotate them to the front because they are rotatable the sizing is 205 55 16 front and back so i'll probably just rotate the better tread tires from the back to the front Probably haven't been rotated. That's probably all what it is. So the front is wearing out faster. If I take you underneath, we do have, looks like we got some oil leaks from the engine. Get the light up here a little better for you. And yeah, you can see, got some leakage on the garage floor there. 
But all in all, not terrible, you know? The car was a slight leak. Most of my cars have had some slight leak or another because I do, I never really buy a brand new car. I'm always buying them pre-owned, just trying to keep them maintained, keep them going. But uh, not a lot of rust, really, at all. And again, it's 2009, so we're, we're uh, doing a lot better than my other car. A lot of my other cars are 25, 30 years old. So coming in with a 2009, was that 14 years old? I'm, uh, I'd say I'm uh, doing pretty well here. The exhaust still looks, looks fairly good. All, all factory exhaust. Not, uh, don't plan on straight piping a <laughs> five cylinder beetle, although that'd be kind of funny. Uh, that's that. And the exterior, you saw a little bit of a uh, clear coat, you know, peeling, fading here on the bumper. But again, free car. Uh, I am not complaining whatsoever. So it's a two door. So you got some uh, fairly large doors driver and passenger side and we're bringing inside they actually do the same color as the exterior color on the uh top of the doors in the interior kind of a nice touch the new fourth generation miatas do that as well i'm pretty sure a hundred and seventeen thousand miles hundred seventeen thousand two hundred seventy see if it'll focus there Yep, there you go. So pretty, pretty good mileage for a free car. Now the only thing is though, when I put the uh, key, any either key in the ignition, there's something in the ignition that's uh, could be slightly broken off from videos I've seen, where you could have a little metal piece that breaks off and it keeps it from you being able to really turn it. I can still start the car, but it's like, I'll get to that point where I can key on, but then beyond that it gets like, or even before I even try to go to key on, it's very hard to turn the key. So there's something up in the ignition cylinder that I need to take this all apart. I watched a video on that. It may just be a small metal piece that breaks off. You can just remove it if you take the whole thing apart. So I'll have to get into that. This is my first car with heated seats. If you can believe it, if you can see it, you can believe it. So up to level five. There we go, put the flash over there. So yeah, never owned a car with heated seats. That's pretty exciting. Cooled seats, that's still too bougie for me, so maybe one day. Oh yeah, the uh, the door handle uh, broke off. These are just plastic, and I've actually been replacing exterior door handles on my neighbor's 2007 Toyota Matrix, so I figure if I can do exterior door handles, I might be able to do interior door handles. So we'll look that up. This one's still intact, but you can feel, you can hear the plastic creaking. So, plastic, a lot of cars nowadays, it, it just becomes brittle and breaks over time. Oh yeah, this, uh, it's got a, maybe not stuck. Oh, okay. So you actually have to push this, and I guess you can rotate your, your armrest. But with the armrest down, I actually, like, my arm gets in the way when I'm trying to shift. Or the the, cons the center console armrest thing is like, I guess I could, you know what, I just found that out. I could put that a little lower, and then I can still shift pretty well with that. So that, actually I might do that. I was, because I thought it stopped like right here, but I just didn't push him a little release lever here. Get to push it down a little more because it was kind of awkward and trying to shift with that in the way. But if that goes all the way down, wow, that does kind of kind of has a little clearance issue with the emergency brake. It just shifted it over to the left. But but yeah, five-speed manual and for reverse, you're actually going to want to push down all the way over and up is going to be reverse and just over and up for first gear. So pretty cool car. I even have a little 12 volt outlet so I can uh, plug in my dash cam and oh yeah the the other big issue the headliner is sagging like no other so I'm going to have to uh, take care of that I don't know what I'm gonna do about it it was coming back down the in the in the back seat area too and um, they just did a bunch of staples just to keep it held up but as you can see 
it's uh, dropped down about three inches or so. So yeah, it still runs and drives. Just has some issues to take care of. And I don't know if you can see on the rear window, or the rear hatch, it kind of like glazed over. You see that happen on some cars? I'm not exactly sure what the issue is there. I think it does have rear defrost though. And tiny, tiny back seats. I'm actually somewhat of a leg around where someone can actually see. So yeah, someone might be able to fit in the front passenger seat. And there actually might be some rear rear leg room, but headroom is going to be definitely for kids or uh, short females. And I still have a CD player. I can take all my CDs from a Mustang in my green CD book, put it in the seat. Put the CDs in and still rock out the classic rock. So this is the 2009 Volkswagen New Beetle. And videos to come, just fixing it up. And I, I guess I'll just drive it around and enjoy it. Might teach some of my friends how to drive stick shift and go from there.